Welcome to the Global Bird Fair here at Rutland Showground in Oakham, where literally thousands of nature nuts, like myself, gather from all reaches of the world to celebrate our magnificent avian friends and everything nature. We'll be checking out all the sights and sounds of the UK's largest bird and wildlife show. And whether you're David Attenborough or David Beckham, this show has something for everybody. Maybe not football. <laughs> so. As the masses begin to gather, alas, so do the clouds, threatening a rather damp start to proceedings here at the Global Bird Fair. But fear not, as us wildies are pretty robust creatures when it comes to the great British weather, and a little light rain won't dampen our spirits. The Met Office is reporting biblical weather conditions with a few sunny outbreaks, so I'm heading in for cover just in case. on offer here. I'm not really sure where to start. Vendors from the far reaches of South America to the tropical shores of Milton Keynes, everything your wild heart could desire is here. But first, I'm heading over to the Zeiss tent for a first-hand review of a new piece of kit that promises to revolutionise my spotting and potentially lower my bank balance. Oh, and if my wife is watching this, I apologise now. So I'm here on the Zeiss stand at the Global Word Fair. These things are incredible. I'll let Stefan introduce them first. I'm Stefan from the Zeiss Nature team in Germany and I do bird protection in my leisure time. Therefore, I use the thermal imaging devices which helps me to find breeding pairs, find later the nests and do protection measurements during daytime observation but also in dusk and dawn and also in the night. Thank you Stefan. So these are thermal imaging cameras and it is a very clever piece of kit. If you've ever seen the Predator, the film, you know where you see that kind of rainbow effect it's picking up the heat pan. That's what this is basically. And you can switch it around lots of different color rays, but it helps you spot species basically. So you might be looking into a, you know, a thick piece of grass in the day or in the nighttime. And this thing here, when you look through it, it'll just give you the heat source. So it's, it's a very clever, clever bit of kit. It records video, it does steals. <laughs> Price wise, this thing here is just under 1500 quid. And this thing, the daddy, is just over 4,000 quid. But if you're into your bird watching and you want to ID those birds or you want to find that species, you've, you've got to have them. For the wannabe explorers visiting today, well, you're in for a treat. From adrenaline pumping adventures to serene nature getaways, holidays are big business. So I think I'm in the holiday tent now and there's lots of people here selling different adventures, different lifestyles. You know, wherever you are, whatever you want to do, there's something for everybody here. Uh, from going to the Isle of Wight or going to Malaysia or going to Ghana. There's so many different places that you can come here and book your holiday. To be honest with you, there's so many, I wouldn't know where to start. Uh, you know, I'm happy just going up the reserve, just up the road for myself. But, you know, even like your local RSPB are here, which is really incredible. 
and the Wildlife Trust. So there's everybody who's anybody in the birding world is here. And it's just sifting through everything. There's so much to take in. And so little time. Um, wait a minute, haven't you got the whole weekend? Uh, yes. Yes, I have. Silly boy. Now, this could be dangerous. If you don't know already, I am a massive Sony fanboy and allowing me within five meters of this stand could be detrimental to my wallet. Oh look, it's my wildlife camera hero, Simon King. I mean, if he's here advocating the brand, then surely, no, no, calm down, Simon. Let's see what these guys have got on offer. So I'm Mark Labour, I'm the event manager for Sony in the UK and Ireland and um, you're obviously at the bird fair and we've got some fantastic products here with us today. We've got the brand new uh, 7200 uh, F4 uh, from Sony. So this is full frame mount and um, it's about, I think, 15% smaller uh, and about 49 grams lighter. So it's uh, a little bit smaller than the previous model. The previous model has been with us for a number of years. so it, Kind of feels like it's a good time to update this uh, and it's combined with the APS-C crop uh, the new A6700 which is brand new first showing at the bird fair 2023. The A6700 is actually uh, one of the newest cameras we brought to the market it looks very similar to the ZV-E1 uh, which is a, a full frame vlogging camera but this one is APS-C so 26 million pixels and we've got all the new features that you would find like on the A7R Mark V in terms of autofocus and the video functionality as well. So you've got really high end, 60 frames per second and 120 frames per second. So for slow-mo, absolutely superb. And also popular at the show isn't just uh, APS-C cameras, lenses, full frame and so on. It's also the bridge cameras. This is the RX10 Mark IV. It's been out for a number of years now and it's always been a very, very popular bridge camera. And once again, at this year's show, it's really, really popular. Uh, you've got a 600 mil equivalent lens. So when I move that out, if I zoom out, you can see here how far this lens go. Uh, in terms of quality at the far end, it's excellent. But in my opinion, when you're looking at it from a macro perspective and get really close up, for me, it's even better. So if there was a lens that was gonna get me into some serious trouble with my wife, it would be this one. This is the Sony 600 mil and it cost just over 10,000 pounds. I'm sure if I came back with this, she would love me. You need to leave. Maybe it's a bit too long. I mean, I've got the smaller one, which is the 200 to 600. It's perfect for what I do, but... Get out! We're obviously used to changing weather conditions in this country, but this is ridiculous. One moment it's bright sunshine and the next, the heavens don't just open. They literally fall. High winds, torrential rain, tidal waves, maybe not tidal waves, but climbing, could it get any worse? Like I said in the beginning though, we're resilient creatures here in Old Blighty. With a break between Exodus and Armageddon, I head over to the Osprey tent where some of the world's leading experts in nature studies, ecology and wildlife filmmakers don the podium to share a tale or two. and ears of all ages are fixated on the wondrous stories and education before us. It is exceedingly bright now, beautiful day, absolutely gorgeous day. Um, it's hailed, it's rained, it's thunderstorm, the lightning, it was very, very frightening. Galileo. But right now I'm having a bit of a chill out 
and having something to eat. I haven't had anything to eat all day. But I've gone around all the stores, all the, you know, from the brands to the small brands, to the holidays, to the gifts. There's so much to see here. There's so much you can spend your money on here. But yeah, there's some cool, cool technology. Um, I am definitely inter interested in the thermal side of uh, lenses and scopes, but <laughs> can I afford it? Probably not, but hey. I want to see more of Simon King. I want to see, hear his tales. I love Simon King, he's an awesome guy. Um, other than that, really, let's hope the weather stays, well, it'd be nice if it stays like this, really. But if it doesn't, we're going to always hide ourselves in the tents, can't we? <laughs> So Swarovski, the Rolls-Royce of optics, it is beautiful, lovely stand here, really nice stand. They've got all sort of thermal things going on here, there's uh, lots of binoculars obviously. It's like Christmas, all over again. Okay, my name's Peter Antonio, I'm head of Swarovski Optic here in the UK. We're at the Global Bird Fair at Rutland Water. Um, we're on the Swarovski stand, obviously. And I'd like to show you a product that we launched just recently, and it's the compact telescope. So we have a straight version and we have the angled version. Um, the straight is in the corporate green color, and on the angled we do the burnt orange or the green, so you have the choice. The beauty of the product is the fact it is so small and compact, so ideal for traveling. Um, it's very easy to operate. You have a zoom, and the zoom ranges from 17 times to 40 times, so a very nice range of magnifications. The wider angle to the telephoto. You zoom just by rotating the collar here by the eyepiece, and you focus very simply with the barrel on the, on the lens. So very straightforward uh, optic to use. It's a 56 millimeter objective size, so um, in terms of brightness, it's excellent. Um, and of course, with the Swarovski optics, the lenses, the coatings, you're gonna get very detailed uh, images and you're gonna get really true colors. So for people that are traveling, don't wanna carry the weight, then this is a fantastic option. All the leading camera brands are here in full summer plumage showing off the best and brightest products for the wildlife photographers amongst us. So, we realised that I might be a bit of a, a Sony fanboy, but you can't really come to a bird fair or anything to do with cameras and not mention these guys. They've got some amazing, amazing bits of kit here. So my name's Tom Mason. Uh, I'm one of the Nikon ambassadors here on the Nikon stand at the Bird Fair. And through the show, we've had a lot of interest in the new Nikon Z8. It's a fantastic camera for wildlife photography because you're getting all of the top end specs that you get from the Z9, that's the flagship camera in the range, yet in a more you know, slim down, compact body. It's fantastic when you're out in the field, going to loads of different locations. Headline specs, 20 frames per second, 45 megapixel sensor, excellent performance, autofocus, eye tracking, everything like that. A fantastic camera for getting out into the field, going after those birds and photographing out in the wild, those things that we all want to do. With the sun shining again, I'm eager to seize the opportunity to head out and meet the lovely people at the BTO stand. If you didn't know already, the British Trust for Ornithology is an organisation dedicated to the study of birds and conservation in the UK. They conduct various different research projects, monitor bird populations and work towards understanding and protecting bird species and their habitats. The nets are already set up for the weekend and they've had a good number of birds already, including this young blue tip, all ready to be ringed. The bird is carefully measured, weighed, and then made to wear an oversized top hat, ready for future monitoring. 
obviously I was joking about the top hat. It would probably be more like a trilby or something like that. Anyway. Once everybody's had the chance to see this beautiful little bird close up, it's released back into the wild, unharmed. It's a heartwarming moment to witness nature up close and contribute to the important work of bird monitoring and conservation. I think an important thing to do if you're looking for new binoculars or scopes or camera gear is to get to an event like this or get down to a, you know, your local retail and actually have a, have a look at what you want because buying this stuff online, it's not the same. It really is not the same. You've got to go to a reserve and get a better perspective, you know, to use them, physically use the product. And, you know, as they say, there's no better place than coming to a, an event like this. Amen to that, brother. Probing the experts is invaluable, especially when you're outlaying a small fortune. Loads of offerings from Viking Optical, loads and loads of updates from their scopes to their binoculars. I even got my classic old pair, which is the Peregrines. My Peregrines have been with me for such a long time, they're so good, but there is an upgrade or an update, which is the Osprey. They're slightly heavier, but apparently they've got a new technology, which is uh, a field flattening technology which gives you crisper edge-to-edge -edge visual, but I don't know really, I don't know. Yep, they do. I'm not upgrading, I'm definitely not upgrading. <laughs> oh my goodness, they are lovely, they're really lovely. Well, there's a sale if I've ever seen one. <laughs> Didn't take long, did it? So we are Bird Life in Ecuador. Our name is Aves El Conservación, and the prize from this year goes to keep working super hard to save the black-breasted hummingbird, the black-breasted public, which is a critical endangered hummingbird. So the project is going to go to the Intact Valley, where we want to keep protecting the species, to implement conservation actions, to restore the habitat, and of course to do research because science is so important for conservation. So keep an eye on us. As our global bird fair adventure draws to a close, it wouldn't be complete without a quick word from the founder of this incredible event. Hi, my name's Tim, I'm Tim Appleton. I'm the uh, organiser of this amazing event, the Global Bird Fair, which used to be part of Bird Fair many years ago, which I started in 1989. And then what we've done now is bring it from the original location to this fabulous new Rutland showground. And we're here for our second year. Uh, we've got an incredible number of marquees up, we've got over 300 exhibitors, we've got everything you can imagine for the wildlife industry. And it's just wonderful because of course what we want to do, not just have a commercial side, we want people like you and me to meet and my friends and make new friends. But of course the other really op big opportunity here is to make funds and create funds for conservation. And since I started the, the fairs, way back, the very first fair in the whole world, we've raised just over 42 million pounds for conservation. So it's a great, I mean, we raised about five or six million over those years, and then that's used to seed other bigger projects. But it's just fantastic. And the atmosphere is unique here. Um, and I just love this area. I have started the Rutland Water Nature Reserve. I started this. And of course, what I did do was bring ospreys uh, to uh, UK, uh, to, sorry, to England, where in fact they're now breeding after a period of uh, 147 years since they last bred. So really exciting. Great to have you here. And you know, we're really uh, keen that many more people will come in the future, learn about conservation, there's so many different organisations here today that will be able to tell you whether about mammals and badgers and butterflies and bugs and beetles and dragonflies, as well as birds, of course. Until the next time, from me and my muddy boots. <laughs> <laughs>